Hello, heavy DIYers and woodworkers. Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. Do you have a messy garage or shed full of garden tools that you can never find? Well, this easy and cheap DIY palette project is going to solve that problem for you. Now, I'm going to take you on a short video tour of how I built this, but for all the details, come on over to heartwoodart.com and see each step in the process, plus how to fully customize it. Okay, let's dive in. Now since this palette will be freestanding, meaning that it won't be attached to the wall, we'll be adding feet to it to ensure that it can't tip forward. So the first thing we'll want to do is stand the palette up to find the most level in. That will make less work for you to level it to add the feet later. Now while the palette is stood up, insert your long handled tools to get an idea of best placement for them and determine how many cross rails you'll need to cut so that you can easily lift them out. I had an industrial pallet that was 45 by 45 inches and I had to remove the top three cross rails. So lay your pallet on the floor and cut those cross rails. I used my circular saw guide to make a straight cut and to support the saw as the rails fell out. And you can see how to make a guide like this yourself over at Heartwood Art. Okay, now let's add the feet. I used two of those rails that we cut out and I mounted them flush to the back, but you can have them stick out of the back a little bit if you want to. Mine stuck out the front by 11 inches, and that was enough to make the pallet tip proof. I used number eight by one and three quarter construction screws and drill pallet holes with a countersink to get the screw head flush or below the plane of the wood. Okay, let's move on to mounting the tools. I have several axes and wanted to mount them on the bottom front shelf. Now, because they're so heavy, I thought supports running through the pallet would be a good idea. I used more of those rail cutoffs for this. And because I had a back and front rail parallel, that's how I decided to mount them. Just know that the support rails could interfere with your long handled tool placement. So be sure to check that tool placement again before you mount the supports. And I attached them with screws into the back rail. And then next, I built that X shelf. I just happened to have torn down another pallet that was the same size, and I had a scrap piece that was exactly the right width and length, so that's what I used. I clamped that piece to the lip of my bench. Then I glued and clamped a scrap 1x2 for the lip edge and tacked it in with my nail gun using 1 and one quarter inch brad nails. Okay, this was a little bit tricky. I stood the pallet on its side so I could screw the shelf to the supports from underneath. There was nowhere to clamp, so I used the pickaxe as a spacer. Okay, now it's time to mark our tools for dowel placement. I use these pre-cut groove dowels because they're the same size of the corresponding drill bit and they expand a little when wet with glue. Dowel rods tend to be a little smaller than the corresponding drill bit, and they're not the easiest thing to cut squarely either. So drill your holes and try not to go all the way through. Then glue your dowels and fit snug using a rubber mallet. I like that bottom axe shelf so much that I decided to build a few more shelves on the front of the right side. I made them the same way as the axe shelf, but since they wouldn't be holding much weight, I simply glued, clamped, and tack nailed them into the cross rail from the back. Now, a few of my tools were perfect for hanging, so I decided to add angled dowels to the front of the cross rails on the left side. You really don't have to angle the drill very much to get this effect. And I did drill all the way through so I could insert a little more of the dowel as these would be holding a bit of weight. And I also had a few screw-in type J-hooks and I mounted them on the side to hold these dirt breaker things for lack of knowing what else to call them. All it took was drilling a pilot hole first and they screwed right in. Now on the other side, I wanted to hang my ice scraper. My two and one half inch construction screws had enough of a smooth shoulder that one of them worked perfectly for hanging the handle without marring the surface of it. And last, I wanted a place to put my knee pads. I used another piece of the cross rail boards I cut out 
and mounted it to one of the inner structure blocks. It was the perfect width to mount inside there and to hold my knee pads. Now, my garden tools get pretty dirty, so I decided not to paint my palette. But you certainly could if you want an even more rustic look by giving it a whitewash or using milk paint or such. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of how to build this garden tool storage palette project. Come on over to heartwoodart.com and see all the details on it and get more easy builds like this too. And I'll see you in the shop.